Live. Like I said, welcome, brothers and sisters, to another Wednesday question and answer. Well, we open up with the Ten Commandments that God commanded the world to keep. Brother Sean. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. We read Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So here on question and answer, you can ask us a question and we'll answer it according to the King James Bible. And if we cannot find the answer, we will seek further counsel to bring you an answer at a later time. Keep in mind that all vague questions will not be answered and all long scripture questions will not be answered for time's sake but we may be able to point you in the direction of a DVD or a CD that you can purchase by calling the office. So please be as direct as possible with your questions so we can be as direct as possible with our answers out of the King James Bible. No other Bibles will be acknowledged on this program. And we also ask that you keep your scriptures to two when you ask us a question so that we'll be able to spread our time evenly amongst our viewers. So also keep in mind that this is a live stream and you may begin to send in your questions at this time, even questions that pertain to everlasting life. But let me introduce to you the family that's on the panel this evening. We got Brother Jerome. Grace and peace. Brother Dre. Good evening. Brother Julius. Good evening, everybody. Brother Sean. Good evening. Sister Deborah. Good evening. And we have the guest caller with us, and I'm Brother Cornell. Sister Deborah, let us begin with our first question of the evening. Yes, there are several questions that will be answered first before getting into tonight's Q&A. So Linda Beach asks, in Matthew 26, verse 64, what was the first and the last era? All right, and... Matthew 26 and 64. Uh, Brother Jerome, can you take it from there? Okay, uh, Brother Sean, let's go there. Matthew 26, verse 64. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Okay. They might have meant uh, the 27th chapter. So let's go to that yeah, 27th chapter. Yeah, yeah, and read verse 64. Okay. We Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure unto the third day, that his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Okay, and that 64 verse... Uh, the second arrow is mentioned, and it said, make sure the uh, sepulchre until the third day, 
least his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So let's make this sepulchre sure, you know. So that was the, uh, you know, the second one. Uh, they, now the first one is different. The first one got something to do with the crucifying of the Lord. That was the first one. All right. So let's go to uh, First Corinthians chapter two and read verse seven and eight. When you get it, go ahead and read. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Yeah, so that would be the first one. All right. That's all I got. Everybody, everybody want to add something they can. All right. Thank you for that, brother. And you caught that error and put it in the right book on behalf of their error that they made. All right. We hope that answered your question. Sister Deborah, next one. Next one. Sister Jezariah asks, what does baldness between your eyes mean in Deuteronomy 14, verse 1? Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. What is that baldness in between the eyes, Brother Julius? Let's go there and read that, Brother Sean. Deuteronomy 14, and we're going to read verses 1, but we're going to take it further and read verse 2. Deuteronomy 14, go ahead when you get it. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not, make cut, you shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead, for thou That's art an holy people. But go ahead, brother. 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. So when the Lord chose Israel, he separated Israel and gave them law, statutes, and commandments so that they would not be like the other nations. So when he said in 14 and 1, you are the children of the Lord your God, you should not cut yourselves nor make any bother between your eyes for the day. It's the same thing uh, as putting print, uh, making any cuts on your flesh and printing marks on your body for the dead. So that was a practice that the seven nations of the Canaanites did. And the Lord did not want Israel to learn the ways of the nations that he cast out of the land of Israel, that he cast out of them. Uh, he wanted them to be a special and peculiar people of him. He did not want them to deal with pagan practices. That's all I got. All right. Thank you for that answer there, brother. I hope that answered their question. Sister Deborah, next question. Yes, Crystal Wells says, if you and your husband are in Sunday church and you later find the truth and you leave, but your husband stays, are you in error with your husband? He says a wife is to follow the husband. Hmm. I think there's that's based on the situation, brother Dre. What you got? Yeah, let's look at that. Let's uh look at what he said. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Because the scripture does say that. Let's let's look at it though. Ephesians 5, brother Sean, when you get to Ephesians 5, read verse 22, and we're gonna skip to 24. Go ahead when you get it, brother. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Yeah, go ahead, 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. This is book. So what he quoting is book. But here's the other part of that, that he did not quote. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 and pick it up at verse 1. And we're going to skip again. Go ahead, brother. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. They follow me, even as I'm following Christ. Follow me. This is what the husband got to be doing. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So if the, if the head 
of every man is Christ, he will be following the words of Christ. And what you're doing is reading to him out of the words of Christ, what thus said the Lord. So yeah, you, you follow your husband, but he should be following Christ. But let's look at one more place. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 7. One place, real quick. 1 Corinthians 7 and read verse 13, brother. And the woman which have a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Don't leave him. Verse 16, go ahead. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? So if you walking in the word of God, maybe you might deliver your husband because maybe he might see the error of it. And the other thing I want to mention to you, and you can read it on your own, is Acts the fifth chapter about Ananias and Sapphira. She followed her husband and the end of that was death. So, Check that out on your own when you get a chance. Acts 5th chapter. That's all I got. All right. Let it obey God, right, brother? Sir. All right. Hope that answered your question, Sister Deborah. Next question. Next question. Rhonda Asa Robinson asks, do uh, in Revelations 2, verse 6, who are the Nicolaeans? Let's go to Revelations 2 and 6. Sean, when you get there, pick up that Revelations 2 and 6, and the guest caller will share some light from there on who are the Nicolaitans. But this, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Okay, let's run them down. We're going to uh, 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 let the Bible tell you. Let's first, let's go with the Revelation, the second chapter. Read verses 12, 13, and skip down to verse 15. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things said, He which have the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Okay, so this he's talking to the people who said Satan's seat among you. You know, skip down to verse 15 and read it. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which thing I hate. Okay, so where Satan's seat is, that's where the doctrine of the Nicolaitan is. Now let's go into Revelation, the 13th chapter, and let's see where Satan's seat is. Revelation chapter 13, and start reading at verse 1 when you get there. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Uh -huh. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Okay, so this is the European Union, where Satan's seat is. But now, who is running this European Union? Let's go into the 17th chapter of Revelation. Start reading at verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with him, saying unto him, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgments of the great whore that sitteth upon many wars. Uh -huh. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. We're talking to Catholic Church here. Keep reading. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. 
And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. That fornication that come out the cup is bad doctrine. But read one more verse, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So she called herself also the mother church, and all the Protestants come out of her. So Nicolaitans are the, is the chapter, uh, 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 Catholic church. Nico, Nico means conquered, and, La, and Latin means the laity, Catholic church. That's who they are. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you for that light there. We hope that answers the day question as we move on, Sister Deborah, to our next one. Yes, yeah, Sister Jezariah uh, also says, uh, Sister Jezariah says, what does thou shall not see a kid in his mother's milk mean in Deuteronomy 14, verse 21? Deuteronomy 14 and 21, Sean, let's go there. When you get there, read it. Guess Carla shares some light. And then Deuteronomy 14 and verse 21. You shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seed a kid in his mother's milk. You know, you know the word seed means boil. But the whole thing is, if you look at it at face value, a kid is a baby goat. And uh, this is saying you shall not boil a baby goat in his mother's milk. But I don't really know if that is what they're saying. I don't think anybody else know that. But if we was going to take it literally, it's really saying you should not boil a baby goat in his mother's milk. So whether it was done or not, I don't know. That's all I have to say about it. All right. We'll leave it right there. and We're going to keep moving, Sister Deborah. Hope that answered that question. Yes. Israel light by blood, Brandon uh, asks, does the Sabbath end when the sun is setting or when it's completely dark? All right. So does the Sabbath end when the sun is setting or when it's completely dark? It's when it's completely dark, but it's open to the panel. And um, do y'all have any scriptures that we can go to on that? Yeah. yeah. Proverbs 7, chapter. Read verse 9. Proverbs, the seventh chapter, and verse nine. Oh, look, before we go there, let's go into Genesis, the first chapter, and show that the evening and the morning is a day. Right. Start, start at one and just, just read, read until we get to the evening and the morning. Read a couple of them. Start when you get there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So the first thing is that lets you know that the evening in the dark, we're talking the same thing here. So now let's go into, we're talking about the evening and the morning. So it was dark before it was light. Then when the Lord created the light, then he said the evening and the morning is the first day. And it went on in the evening and the morning is the second day. So now let's go and see what the evening is. Now let's go into Proverbs 7th chapter and read verse 9. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. So when it is dark, 
That's when the day starts. People have misinterpreted the twilight. No, that means when there ain't no light left. In the evening, in the black and dark night. So your day starts when it is dark. Not when the initial sun go down, because it's not totally dark then. That's all I have to say. All right. Hope that answered your question. We're going to move on to the next one, sister. Yes. Uh, Hope says, if I get rid of all leaven for the week of unleavened bread and my husband buy more, should I just leave him alone? Or what if he tells me to prepare it for him? Should I prepare it for him? Yes, Carla. What do you say about that? First thing is, a brother uh, uh, referred to, Brother Dre referred her to uh, Acts the fifth chapter. Okay? But as far as he's yep. the head of the house, if he want to deal with it, then it's on him. It's up to you not to eat it. I'm prepared for it. That's all I have to say. All right. We're going to keep it moving, sister, with a time check. Yes, the time is 7.53. MC asks, who made up the days of the week and also months? Months and the days of the week. Who made these days up, Brother Julius? The God of Israel did. The original God, the original days of month, the God of Israel did. Let's take a look at it. Because what we have today, uh, you have to understand the God gave all of Noah's son a chance to run this earth. Let's go to Genesis, the first chapter. Now, if you're talking about the uh, the day that we keep today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all these are named after pagan gods and planets. You know, pagan gods and planets, which we, which uh, they got from the Romans, which they got from the Greeks. Pick it up at verse one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning, man wasn't even created yet. In the beginning, uh, go ahead, uh, skip, skip down, my brother, to verse 5 and go ahead. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Notice, the Lord calls it the first day, day 1 through day 6. Day one through day six. Pick up at verse 31. Go ahead. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So the Lord numbered his days, but he is going to Genesis 2 and 1. Now the Lord, the only day that the Lord named uh, and set apart was the seventh day. Go ahead at verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So now the seventh day is called the Sabbath day because Sabbath means rest. So you got your days there. And then the Lord turned around and gave you the much. Let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. Let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. Now the, the name of the months, God named them, but... The original, uh, the Babylonians recognized that too. Exodus 12, and pick it up at verse uh, 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 one, and read verse 1 and 2, Sean. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. It shall be the first of the month of the year to you. Go go to, uh, continue at verse, uh, that's verse 2? Yes. Good, good. Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, quickly. Because God said everything in order. You got, when the Babylonians came, they had their chance to rule. Then the Medo-Persian, they had their chance to rule. Then the Greeks came, they had their chance to rule. And what we have today is the Roman number uh, names and days and months. Deuteronomy 16, pick it up at verse 1. Observe the month of Abib. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. 
So Abib is the first month in, in, in God's calendar. It's called Abib. After Israel went into captivity to the, Bab to the Babylonians, it was called, the Babylonians called it Nisan. So, but it's still the first month of the year. So uh, the Lord created the days and the months, and then he put things in man's hands. And that's why he told Israel, this month should be the first month of, to you. Because he wanted to separate uh, Israel from everybody else. But the whole world observed this. And now, since it's in the hands of the Gentiles, we got January, February. Now, we've, we've been taught that October is the, um, is the, the uh, 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 10th month. But it's not. It is really the 8th month because it starts with OCT. December is the 10th month because it starts with GEC. You do the research on your own. All of it, the Romans changed a whole lot of it. So that's what we got today. Our months today are Roman, and our days are Roman, but the weekly Sabbath have not changed. Anybody want to add to this? But answer to yes, the sir. question is, yeah. God is the one that created all of us. That's the answer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. We hope that answered your question there. Sister Deborah, we moving. Yes. Margaret Browning asks, can you attend the feast if you have not been baptized? If you have not been baptized, can you attend the feast, Brother Dre? Absolutely. There's nothing that says you can't attend the feast if you have not been baptized. Um, participating is a whole nother thing. Certain things restrict you from participating in the feast, but not baptism. So, yes, you can attend the feast if you have not been baptized, by all means. That's all I got. All right, brother. Thank you for that answer there. Sister Deborah, next question. Next question. Jennifer Love asks, is there such a thing as a soulmate? Sure. There's a such thing as a soulmate. Soulmate comes in different uh, varieties and it can have different de definitions. You know, a person who understands you and is suited to be in a loving relationship can be considered a soulmate. You can even have a great friend where it's strictly platonic. That can be considered a soulmate. You know, a husband and wife, you know, can be considered as soulmates also. And, you know, even, even the eagles that soar in the air, they have one partner and they mate for life. They are considered as bird mates, if you would. But, um, if you're seeking, you know, a married soulmate, it should be for life, you know, because the Lord say he made us one anyway. You know, that's why you have in the in the vows, it talks about rich or poor, sickness or health, as long as you both shall live. That is supposed to be your soulmate when you're going to take on a wife or a husband. Sean, let's go on to 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. 1 Corinthians 7 and talk about the, the marriage part of soulmate. First Corinthians 7. When you get there, brother, read that verse 2 and 3 for me. And this is to keep you out of trouble with the Lord. What does the Lord say to avoid fornication? Go ahead, brother. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. And you should be building your soul made from there because it is supposed to be until death do you part. Go ahead. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Right. So it should be a lot of kindness and a lot of love in that situation when you are seeking for the soul mate. Now turn to Malachi, the second chapter right quick. Because if you're seeking a husband or you're seeking a wife, until you get that husband or until you get that wife, you should be keeping your clothes on. Because if not, you end up in some fornication, as we just read. Malachi, the second chapter, we're going to read one verse. Because like I say, the Lord intends for it to be soulmate forever. As long as you both shall live. Malachi, the second chapter, read one verse. Because the voice is... Very popular. The Lord didn't intend it to be. And 
Moses even allowed it under the Lord's instruction because of the way the women were being mistreated. But read that verse 16. Let's see how the Lord feel about divorce. Go ahead. And putting away. Go ahead. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away. For one covered violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. So when you come together, husband and wife, you're supposed to have plans on being great soulmates all the days of your life. And that's the way the Lord had it written. And that's all I got. I like it through. And we hope. Ring. Go ahead. Guess caller. Go right ahead. There's a lot of people when they use the word soulmate. That means that somebody's born and you were born and uh, you was meant to come together. I just mm. want to make sure it's not what they were trying to find out because, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing to come together and keep the law and everything else. But I'm pretty sure the... The person that asked the question was saying, do I have somebody that was born just for me? The question mm -hmm. is no. The Bible tells you if a man find a wife, he has received favor from the Lord. I just want to answer that side of it. Yeah. All right. Thank you for right. that addition there. As we continue to move on, Sister Deborah, to our next question. Yeah, she also asked, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, what do you do if your spouse is an unbeliever? All right. I had a little something to do with that earlier question there, guest caller, but during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, what do you do if your spouse don't believe as you do? Well, if your spouse brings some bread in the house, if he is the head of the household, so he is responsible. However, you don't eat it. There you go. And that's all, that's all to it. All right. Sister Deborah, next question. Yes, yeah, Sister Abigail says, please clarify when the count starts for three days and three nights of Jesus being in the grave. Is it in the evening of the Passover or the evening or the end of the Passover? or the evening of the first day of unleavened bread. So when does the count stars for three days and three nights, Jesus being in the grave? Yes, Carla, share some light. First thing is, let's go into uh, Exodus 12 chapter. And uh, we're, going, we're going to... Uh, uh, Read, I think, about 1 through 3, Exodus chapter 12. We're going to skip down some. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 12, start at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now, skip down to uh, uh, verse 16 and read it. Six, right? And in the first... Verse six. Verse six? Uh-huh. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay. Give down to verse 12 and read it. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So now, the Passover starts at night. That's the evening. Later, like we went early and showed you what night is. So, mm -hmm. Passover, it starts at the 14th day of the month, Abel, and it ends that's when, the, when, the, when, when the 15th day of the month of Abel come in. So now, Jesus ate the Passover when he was here on the 14th day of the month, Abel, 
and he died on the Passover, which was the daytime or the morning time of the 14th day of the month, Abel. And he was put in the grave on the beginning of the evening of the 15th month, day of the month, Abel, which is the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm-hmm. So that's when he did it. He was put in the grave on the 15th day of the month Abia, which was the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that was in the middle of the week. So being that God's day started in the evening, the evening and morning, what they call Wednesday night, according to God's day, that would be, that would be the beginning of Thursday night. That would be the beginning of Thursday, which is night. And in the daytime, it's Thursday in the daytime. And then he'll be in there Friday uh, night, which is the second night. And in the daytime, he'll be in there Friday in the daytime because we go in the evening and morning. And then he'll be in there uh, 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 <clears throat> Saturday when the, when the seventh day started, what they call Saturday night, okay? And, mm-hmm. in, and, which is, uh, and in the daytime of Saturday, he was the third day. And he rose in the daytime of Saturday, just before the sun that went down, which people call Sunday, or which would be the first day of the week. But if you use the Gentile term, then they use it. We're going to use their term. He was put in the grave Wednesday night. He was in there Thursday night, and he was in there Friday night. And then he was in there Thursday in the daytime, Friday in the daytime, and Saturday in the daytime, and he rose Saturday evening just before it got dark. Let's put him in there three days and three nights. So I gave you the Hebrew version and the Gentile version. Either way it goes, he rose Saturday in the daytime before the sun went down. And he was put in the, uh, uh, and he was, and uh, 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 that's when he rose. But he died in the middle of the week. Middle of the week, but being called Wednesday, it would be Thursday night according to Hebrew time, but it would be Wednesday night according to the Gentile time. Either way you look at it, it's still the middle of the week. So I hope that didn't confuse you. All right. Hope that answered your question there. And uh, Sister Deborah, time check. Yes, the time is 8.09. And Deborah Walder says, I was reading Joshua 24, verse 32, talking about the children Israel bringing Joseph's bones from Egypt to be buried in Shechem. Does this mean the children of Israel was unclean to the burying of Joseph's bones? What says Brother Julius? Let's go to, let's go to that scripture and read that. Joshua 24, verse 32. And the bones of, I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in the parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamar, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. So now... They were fulfilling that which was written in Genesis, the 50th chapter. Okay? Because Joseph made them swear oath that they would not leave his body uh, uh, or his bones down in, down in Egypt. Because he died in Egypt. Let's go to Numbers, the 19th chapter, and let's let the book answer that question. Numbers 19. And we're going to pick this up, uh, Sean, at verse 11. We're going to read 11 to 13. When you get it, go ahead. He that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. Uh huh. He shall purify himself with it on the third day. Uh -huh. And on the seventh day, he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. So now he that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean. And uh, Joseph's body was dead and deteriorated into his bone because they embalmed him. And yes, 
He's, they were unclean, and once they got to the to the, uh, they had to do just like the book said. They got to, uh, they had to uh, purify themselves. That's all I got. Hey, uh, can we read that verse sixteen? Sixteen. Thanks, and, Rick. and whosoever toucheth one that is slain with the sword in the open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Good add on there, brother. And uh, thank you for that answer there, brother Julius. As we move on, Sister Deborah, to our next question. Next question. We can talk right here, says... The other camps always pushing the book of Obadiah saying the Edomites will all be destroyed. Is this scripture? All right. Let us talk right here, Brother Jerome. What you got? Well, I understand why they say that because the way it reads, it sounds exactly like that. But with all you said, Lord, with all you're getting, getting understanding now as far as all of the camps i don't know what camps you're referring to i can speak for the israel of god um and we teach what we're about to read let's go to jeremiah 49 jeremiah 49 read verse 10 through 11 and then we're gonna go to isaiah 56 after that brother sean yes sir but i have made esau bear I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not. Stop. Now pay close attention to verse 11. Go ahead. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. He said I will preserve them alive. So don't sound like he destroying them and they have eat them also. Okay. So what I want to add, Isaiah 56, um, to this, um, to this is because if you keep the covenant of the Lord, I don't care what nationality you are, Esau included, you can get into the kingdom of God. You can get salvation, even if you Esau. All right. So let's go to Isaiah 56 and read verse two through six. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lay of hold on it that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Come on. Also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Yeah, so anybody that take a hold of the covenant. They can be salvaged. They can up, obtain eternal life, Esau included. That's all I got on it. That's right, Brother Jerome. That's why he sits on the mercy seat. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. We hope that answered your question there. Sister Deborah. we're moving on to our next question. Uh, yes, we are now into tonight's Q&A for Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2024. A. Thomas asks, how do we of faith explain the difference between the current ABIB, April the 22nd, Passover date? And the Bible says that Passover is on the 14th day of ABIB. Right. Guess Carla? Let's go and see what the Lord says about the... Uh... Because it's what regulates everything. Let's go into Genesis, the first chapter. Read verses 14 and 15. Genesis 1, 14 and 15. 
And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So now, the Lord wants this the sun and the moon. He put up there for signs, you know, uh, 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 and, and, and uh, uh, for days and, uh, and for years. Now, we use the lunar. That means I must start with the, uh, 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 with the new moon. But we also use solar. Solar determines the year. Now, the man, the Gentiles, the one that took the time together, only use solar. That means, that, and, and they days are constant. So now, but when you use, but you have to use both of them, solar and the lunar. So if days are constant, so you got your, your date, not day, your dates are constant. They don't change. But when, when, when you use the lunar, the new moon come up, and it would be that the, the new moon come up. That is the first day of the month. So now you count the day of the month as opposed to days, dates that are going from uh, uh, during the year without a breakup. So now when the new moon show up, you start that month over with. And sometimes they can be up to uh, 12 and 13 day difference. So the difference is they use just a uh, solar, which you get your 365 days, either way you look at it. But we use lunar. So sometimes when the new moon show up, it could be on, like in this year, it was on the 22nd day uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, April, but it was the 14th day of the month April, because we use the moon and we use Jerusalem time. So what they did was they used half of what God commanded us. He said that the, the sun and the moon, they are both are to be used. So the year is determined by the sun, but the month is determined by the moon. And the moon could come up, like I say, any time with the twelve within the twelve or thirteen span of days. That's how you get your difference sometimes. That's all. I hope you understand that. All right. Hope that answered your question there, Sister Deborah. Next question. Uh, yes, uh, A. Thomas also asked, since Jesus is our Passover, did he die on the 14th day of the first month, A. Bib? And Exodus 12, verse 6 is given. Brother Jerome. Let's go take a look at that, Exodus 12, verse 6. Go ahead and read and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay, so in that Exodus 12, that's a four-legged lamb that represents Jesus. Okay, it symbolizes Jesus. It points to Jesus. He the two-legged lamb that's supposed to die. Okay, on the 14th day of the first month, a bid. Okay, so let's go read Matthews the 26th chapter, verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter after that. You get it? Go ahead and read. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is portrayed to be crucified. Yeah, and he's speaking of himself. Okay, he's the son of man, and he's betrayed to be crucified, and he's going to be crucified on the 14th day of the month Abib, which is the Passover. Okay, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and just read verse 7. Okay, let's read 5 and 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. That's it. That's all I got. 
All right. Thank you for that, brother. Hope that answered their question. Sister Deborah, next question. Next question. Linda Beach says, one of the seven day lessons, the guest caller stated he is keeping his eye on Israel, which I'm doing, she says, in the common market. Question, what are we looking for in the common market to do? Yes, Carla? Well, the first thing, why uh, I have to be kept on Israel is because what the Lord, uh, uh, the sign that the Lord gave. Let's go into Matthew, the 24th chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 5, and then we're going to skip. Matthew 24, 1 through 5, first. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive me. Now, skip down to verse 15, because they asked the question, what's going to be, when the temple going to be torn down, when you going to come, and when it's going to be the end of the world? Well, first thing, he warned them about false prophets. Now, verse 15, go ahead. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now, what is the uh, abomination that's the Pope? Where is the holy place? That is the temple that's going to be built by the Edomites. So when Edomites build a temple over there, then we know that the Pope is going to move in it. And that is when you suppose to flee. Get down to verse 21 and read it. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Uh-huh, keep reading. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And they're going to be shortened when the Lord comes. Because the Lord's going to come from heaven. Read verse 29 and 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So now, the reason you watch Jerusalem is waiting. And you watch it for them to build that temple, which they're going to be, which they're going to build. Now, once they build that temple, then the Pope going to leave Rome. And 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 be installed in that temple, but he's going to be installed by who? By the European Union. Mm-hmm. And now, by the European Union, because they 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 give you just like Jesus gave you a time and gave you a, 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 a gave you a sign when to flee, because you know when that happened, it's fitting to happen. And when the Pope move in it, you got three and a half years. So that's why you got a fleet time to go into it and make it to the face of safety. But it put you in a general time when all this going to take place. That is defined by the European Union. Now let's go into Daniel, the second chapter. And we're going to read from 31 to 35. Then we're going to skip down and read 44. 31 to 35. Daniel's 2, 31 to 35. And then after that, we're going to skip to 44. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image is hate. 
Listen, first, give you a little background. Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, this statue. And uh, now Daniel is interpreting what this statue is. Now, he said, you saw this great image. Now, keep reading. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was now, the... Uh, what verse are you? I'm at 35. Read it. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smoked the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, that, that image, the head of it was Nebuchadnezzar and the feet of it was the European Union. Ten toes. That's why you got the ten nations over there that's making it. And the stone that's going to smite the image on the feet and, and fill the entire earth, that is the Lord. Yeah. Now, give not 44 and read it. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So now, we're looking at the European Union over there, the ten nations that's run the Western Europe. So we are in the days of these kings. So now, and the book just said that stone which is going to make the image on the feet, that means that Jesus is going to come and the war of Armageddon, he's going to take down not only the European Union, he's going to take down the whole earth. But it's in the time of the European Union. And we're looking at it because we are in the days of the East King. So that let me know that the Lord will be here pretty soon because he said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And where is he going to set it up at? On this earth. Because he said a stone that smote the image on the feet grew and filled the entire earth. So the European Union sets the time frame and the Matthew, the 24th chapter, sets the beginning. That's all I have to say. All right. I hope that answers your question there, Sister Deborah. Next question. Next question. Barbara Steele says, I did not understand that as far as Mary having a seed, because in the reading, it says she shall receive. So that means she didn't have it already. Is that correct? Brother Julius? Not until the angel came. But let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter, and read about this seed. Because Mary is the is uh, she was the one, the woman that bare the seed? Revelation 12, chapter Sean, pick it up at verse. Start reading it. Let's go 3 to 5. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Uh huh. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now this is talking about the fourth coming of Jesus. Go ahead. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So Israel is the woman and Jesus came through that woman. But look at this, so skip down to 17. Let's get what happened to this woman. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, we just told you that according to the Bible, that the woman is Israel and, is, and, and Jesus came out of Israel and the woman is the church. And let's look at this right here. He told you in verse five that she brought forth the man was to rule all nations. Luke, the first chapter. Let's look at it. Be fulfilled now. Luke 1, and pick it up at verse 26. 
You said 46, Julius? 26. Luke 1 at 26. Let's look at when that's uh, when he came through the seed, uh, through the woman, which was Mary. Go ahead. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Skip down to verse 31 and go ahead and read. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So this is when this was fulfilled. Go ahead at verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. One more. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Man, so if, if you read verse 34, she was a virgin, but the seed was planted. The angel brought the seed, which was Jesus, and planted it inside of her. And that's when he came forth. And that's when this prophecy was fulfilled. So yes, she did not have that seed until it came forth. I had to give you the background of it. I hope that helped. All right. That really is a metaphor. It's telling you simply that Jesus is going to be born of a woman, but he's not going to have the seed of a man to make it happen. The angel is going to come and plant that body in this woman. So when you say the woman seed, that is talking about, that's a metaphor. All right. Sister Deborah, time check. Yes, the time is 8.33. Linda Beach says, does the common market change indicate that we should be stocking up on supplies while we are here until it's time to go to the wilderness? Brother Dre, what you say about stocking up till it's time to flee? Hey, you can stock up on supplies and, and that may be fine. But when it's time to go, it's time to go. At the same time, you know, the supplies ain't going to help you. Just be informed in the word of God. And when you see these signs taking place, like the guest caller just read, hey, and it's time to go. When you see the abomination of desolation set up, you know it's time to go. So meanwhile, if you got a deep freeze and you want to stock up on supplies, go right ahead. I remember a few years ago, I went to Walmart and Walmart shelves were empty. It was during the pandemic. I've, I've never seen that like that before. And next, it was panic buying going on. So people were stocking up because they were afraid. They didn't know what was happening. But at the same time, our hope is in the Most High God and we should stock up on instructions from his word. And so I would encourage that. Uh, let's go to one place. Um, let's go to Revelation 13 and read 16 and 17. Sean, when you get it, go ahead and read that. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Mm -hmm. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So whatever you stocking up on, it ain't going to help you in this time. And if you take that right. mark, then you in trouble. But if you don't take that mark, whatever you suffer, you just got to know that it's only going to be for a three and a half year period. And after that, that is it. So just yeah. do it. I hope that that helps. Yeah, that's it, Brother Dre. Because like the Lord said, when it's time to flee, you got to go. You ain't got time to pack no bag. Time to get out. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for that answer, Brother. Sister Deborah, next question. Next question. Keisha Lawrence Thomas asks, if we make it into eternal life, will we recognize each other? Is there a scripture to find the answer? We all plan on making it there. Brother Julius, what you got to say? Yes, you're going to recognize each other. Let's go to Matthew, yep. the 16th chapter. That's why when you read this book, this book tells you all the answers. 
Matthew 16 chapter. Sean, pick it up. Start reading that verse. Uh, let me see if this is what I want. Matthew 16 and 28. Matthew 16 and 28. Go ahead and read it. Now start at 27, Sean. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now what happened six days later? Go right into the 17th chapter and verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Now what happened to Jesus while he was right there among them? Go ahead. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. But who else showed up? And it, it, uh, remember, this is a vision of the future. Who else showed up? Go ahead. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. So and, and Moses and Elijah was gone centuries uh, uh, before uh, they came on the scene, but they recognized Moses and Elijah. Peter, James, and John recognized Moses and Elijah, and Jesus uh, transfigured right before them, and he began to shine. One more place. Let's go to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew, the 28th chapter. And by the way, spirit beings in their natural form shine. Yes, sir. The 28th chapter of Matthew, son, read verse uh, 5 and 6. Matthew 28, 5 and 6. This is when he was uh, crucified and then resurrected. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where they Lord, where the Lord lay. Man, skip down to verse 9 and 10. Go ahead, brother. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, all hail. And they came and helped him by the feet, and hailed him by the feet, and worshipped him. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. So now he just appeared to them, and they recognized him after he resurrected. So yes, you will recognize uh, in the resurrection, and just like you're going to see them in the lake of fire. There's going to be a great gulf fix, but you're going to see them also. They're going to see you, but they come to, can't come to you. You can't go to them. So yes, you'll recognize each other. That is correct. Thank you, brother. All right, Sister Deborah, next question. Next question. Israel Lone Star asks, in Exodus 31, verse 17, what does rested and refreshed mean for God? Let's go there, brother. Sean, can you get there? Read that Exodus 31 and 17, and then the guest caller shares some light. And what does rested and refreshed mean for God? It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. It means what it said. It ain't <laughs> nothing. When you get tired, you rest. And once you rest, you are refreshed. So God, so it speaks for itself. He rested and he was refreshed. Yeah. Ain't nothing else to say about it. That's it. Took a whole lot putting this earth together. All right. Hope that answered your question there as we continue to move on, Sister Deborah. Next one. Next one. All day production uh, says, Did Job? Only lose his sons. Verse 19 only mentioned the young men and not the daughters. He lost them both, sons and his daughters. But I see the I see the point you're saying in that verse 19. We'll read that too. But Sean, let's go to Job 1. And let's prove out that Job lost them both. Job 1, when you get there, brother, read 1 and 2 for me. 
Go ahead. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. All right, so he had 10 kids. He had seven sons, and he had three daughters, and he feared God and hated evil and walked perfect and upright. What a good report to have, huh, Sean? Yes, sir. Pick it up at verse 4. Read 4 and 5 for me. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so. The so. Sons, were already, sons were already gathered together feasting, and they called their three sisters and said, hey, come on, join us for a little food and a little drinking. Go ahead. And it was so. When the days of their feasting were going about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. I right, see there's mentioning sons too. Don't say nothing about the daughters, but skip down brother to verse 18 and let's bring in the daughters because there was a messenger that came. Read 14 and 15 so we can Kind of clear it up a little bit. Go ahead. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabines fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So this was a messenger letting Job know the things that he had lost during this time. Skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. So and you behold, see that the sons and daughters was mentioned right here. Brought in the daughters saying they were both eating and drinking. Go ahead. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So we see that they are dead. Everybody that was in that house, some seven sons, some three daughters, even though it mentioned the men right here, they were in there also, and all of them died. So skip down, brother. Let's just read 21 and 22. Go ahead. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed mm. be the name of the Lord. In what all else, this, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God whose. So, as you see there, he lost his seven sons and his three daughters. All ten of his children perished, and that's all I got. Well, and he since, yeah, he did replace him. You want to read that, that blessing? Go to Job 42 and read 12 through 15. Yes, sir. Yeah. Job 42, verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kazia, and the name of the third Karen Hapuch. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Mm-hmm. Took them all away and he gave them all and he brought and gave them a new set. And then same yeah. with was under three dollars. That's all I have to say. All right. Hope that answered your question, Sister Deborah. Next one. Next one. Gordon Scott uh says, I just got circumcised over a week ago. And very excited about taking the Passover this year. 
And I was sharing scriptures with a friend and my dad about having to be circumcised before you take the Passover. They said you didn't need it because of 2 Chronicles 30, verse 18. I was hoping to get better understanding from the panel. Brother Julius, a little better understanding for him on that. Yeah. Let's go to let's go to Second Chronicles, the thirtieth chapter, Sean. Because what these guys are doing is trying to take your crown. You did the right thing. We're gonna read the book and see if uh, Second Chronicles thirty uh, and eighteen has anything to do with circumcision. Pick it up at seventeen. For there we were did. many seventeen. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh and Issachar and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, the good Lord pardon everyone. The good Lord pardoned everyone. Verse 19, go ahead. That prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And that's what this scripture is all about. There were many told you in verse 17 that there were many that were not clean, you know. And then it goes down that said it had not been cleaned according to the purification of the sanctuary. What was that? You had you had some people who had not washed their clothes, people who had not washed themselves up, people who had probably been dealing with all kinds of things. They had been, uh, uh, and, and they were in captivity. So this scripture has nothing to do with circumcision. What? Let me show. Let's go to Genesis the seventeenth chapter. This is a covenant that cannot be broken, and no other scripture in the Bible overrides this. This is the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham. Genesis 17. Let's pick it up at verse 10 and go ahead. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Uh -huh. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Don't say nothing about cleansed or uncleansed. Nothing. Just circumcised. Go ahead. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Go ahead. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Uh -huh. Every man child in your generations, he uh -huh. that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So one law for all people, Israel first and the stranger everywhere bought with your money means you are bought with the shed blood of Jesus Christ because he yes, shed sir. blood for everybody. Go ahead, 13. 13. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Because he never took it away. Go ahead at 14. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He have broken my covenant. And that's what the people that's advising you and counseling you is telling you. They, they, they are, they have broken. The, if they don't get circumcised, repent. They have broken the Lord's covenant. John the Baptist was baptized. Uh, circumcised the eighth day. Jesus came in the flesh and was circumcised the eighth day. And he's the author and finisher of our, of our faith. So you did the right thing, brother, and they are 100% wrong according to the scriptures. Anybody want to add to that? Yeah. Uh, your yeah. Observation, observation you made was they was Israelites. And every one of them, and all the strangers among Israel was circumcised when they was eight days old. So it couldn't possibly be talking about circumcision when you're talking about the unclean and clean. So they was circumcised eight days after they were born. So that wasn't even the question. Okay. 
Everybody was circumcised. So he prayed for another kind of uncleanness, like Jesus said. That's all I have to say. Must right. needs, must needs be circumcised. Anybody, anything outside of that, you have broken the Lord's covenant. Mm hmm Yeah. All right. Hope that answered your question there, Sister Deborah. Time is a ticking as we are winding down. Yes. Next question. I was at the grocery store when I checked out. On the floor was two $10 bills folded up. Instead of keeping the money, I turned it in at the service desk. Was this correct or should I have kept the money? Panel? What do we say? Money. You should have kept the money. What do you think the clerk is going to do when you gave it to him? If you, like money, you if you saw the money fall out of somebody's pocket, then you stop them and say, hey, here's your money. <laughs> but if you find them and you're going to take it to the clerk, nah, you're going to make him a thief because he's going to take it anyway. When you walk away, you're going to put it in his pocket. <laughs> so you should have kept the money. That wasn't stealing, you found it. The <laughs> one that lost it. So when you give it to the cook, now this guy ain't gonna get on the uh, 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 microphone on the loudspeaker and say, "I found twenty dollars, fold it up." If you lost hmm. it, got it up here. Half of the store would have went up there for it. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. And what you did was well, you created you a thief. That's all I have to all say. Right. All right. Sister Deborah, next question. Next question. Israel Lone Star asks, did Ham and Shem have the same opportunity to rise and fall 10 times like, like Japheth, which is Gentiles? Is it written anywhere? All right. So you're talking about this Roman Empire. But they want to know whether or not Ham and Shem had the opportunity to Rise and fall ten times like the Gentiles. Nope. It's not written. Only the Gentiles didn't rise and fall ten times. Only Rome. Yep. Only That's Rome. It. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Only Rome. Yep. So there you go. That's your answer for that, Sister Deborah. Next question as speed time is upon us. Yes, yeah, Sanders Herring says in Revelation 1 verse 5, it mentioned Jesus as the first begotten of the dead. Many scriptures also says the first fruit of the spirit, first resurrected from the dead to become God. Does this make him the same as born again? Does it, yeah. Brother Jerome? Oh, guess call him? Yeah, absolutely. He was the firstborn from the dead to become God. He was the first. But you made a statement in that question about first fruits of the spirit, though. And first fruits of the spirit is usually referring to the word of God, not Jesus himself. You know, he the spirit that give us the first fruits of his word. But, yeah, he is the first um, born from the dead. So let's go to uh, John, the third chapter. And uh, Jerome, Jerome, yes, Jerome. Yes, call him. Go ahead. His answer. Yes. Okay. Okay. Born again. Okay. They were born in the man family, flesh and blood. And when you come out the grave and you of uh, 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 spirit, you have been born again. There ain't no more. That's so complicated. All right. So, Sister so Deborah, we're going to move on to our. Moving All right, moving next. on. Moving on. Queen Sonya says, can you talk about Matthew 27, verses 52 and 53? What happened to them? What happened to them? They must be talking about the ones that uh, came up out of the grave, it looks yeah. like here. All right, let's go there and read that, Sister Deborah. Brother Sean, when you get there to that Matthew 27, let's read about this. And let's pick it up at that verse 50 to show that 
you know, the Lord had already died here. So people don't be thinking that these people came out of the grave before him. Go ahead. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came so the out. the graves were open. The graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And let's see when they came out. Go ahead. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So they came, these saints came out of the grave after his resurrection. After Jesus had already risen from the grave, they came out after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And these people here who came out of the grave after his resurrection, they died again. They went back to the grave. So they did not remain among the living. They did go back to the grave, waiting to receive that great prize that all of us are looking forward to, which is that first resurrection. And that's and all I, I got read, on that. Go ahead. Read, read Romans 6 and 9. Romans 6 and 9. No one that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So the only one that had that was Jesus. Like Cornell said, everybody else died. Had they mm -hmm. not died, Revelation 20 chapter would not have said when the people rose from the when the people that rose from the dead, it wouldn't be called the first resurrection. Right. Okay? That's that's correct. All right. Hope that answered your question, Sister Deborah. One more. All right. One more. Z Israel says, my husband would not allow me to watch any lessons except Brother Bowie live lessons on the Sabbath. And he refuses to teach me. Therefore, I'm not being fed. Am I putting him before God by obeying him and not allowing my brothers to edify me through the week? Yes, Carla, can you share some light on that question? Sure, yeah. You should read and listen to anybody that's teaching the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. As you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Husband can't right. save you, but he can get you cut off by taking your crown away from you. Then you watch more than Brother Boyd. Watch anybody that's teaching the word of God and read for yourself. All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. We hope that that answered your question there. And we have ran out of time, Sister Deborah. Yes, the time is nine o'clock. All right. We'd like to thank everybody from all around the world who tuned in with us this evening. If you submitted a question, we didn't have a chance to get to it. Please don't resubmit it. Sister Deborah will take your question, put it in rotation, and we will answer it next week for you. So until we all come together again, please, we ask that you be safe out there. Be blessed, and may the Lord have mercy on us all. Brother Sean, close us out. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, all. Good night. Good night.